So we would like to show you today um, a short, simple workflow, and we will start in BricsCAD. So hoping to see, yeah. So we start from an empty model. And what Jacob is going to do is in this case, we are going to just import some geometry that represents a structure model, which could come from any other software, maybe even SolidWorks. But this is now, this is just pure dump geometry. Nothing is classified or anything. There's no data, just the geometry. And in the next step, what we can do is we can first BIMify the model. So that's, or BIM will recognize where are the columns here in this model? Where are the beams? What are the walls? So by this way, we already have um, a quick classification of where are the structural elements in the model. Now, in this case, we have no uh, strength calculations. So in this case, for safety, we are going to increase the sizes of the columns and the beams, the, the, the sizes of the profiles. So that's being done now. We're applying uh, standard HEA profiles in this case to the profiles and uh, with the walls we just leave them like they are, they are classified. Uh, we don't need to do anything f further I think. So now this is a kind of yeah, conceptual model. Uh, and. What we can do now is uh, upload this model to Brixis 24-7 and then pass it on to a uh, structural engineer that is using Parabuilt, for example. And uh, we will now see what Parabuilt can do with this model, also making use of uh, the BIM API functions that we have available. So, I can give the word to Rudy. I present you Rudy Joris, who is also from Parabuilt. Thank you, Luke. Rudy, please. So what we do is we detail the full structure and uh, generate automatic output from that. So we don't want to start from zero, so we use the BIMified model. And we have an API to access all the BIM data. And uh, we call this data uh, LOD 200, Level of Development 200, because it is design stage. And we make LOD 400, Fabrication Stage, which means uh, ready to be built. Um, so since we have the API, you don't need to convert. You can just open it, uh, the drawing. And uh, we can just start modeling. It happens in the background. So we will draw some purlins using context modeling. This is a feature. Uh, that uses the existing geometry in the drawing to get to your model faster. So we just say between columns, and we can, uh, we can get suggestions uh, right under the cursor, and we just click to accept. So we draw a few of these. You can also uh, set other limits like uh, level height or alignments, rotations, etc. We do this for the beams as well. And uh, after that, we want them connected as well. And connections in Parabuilt are made using uh, template drawings, constrained in template drawings. So the user can make his own connections as well. So what you do is you just say, you, I want a connection. You select the members. And the library is scanned. And uh, it proposes valid connection choices. So you apply it. You make changes. And uh, it adapts to this situation. Now you also, after you made your changes, you also want the rest connected. So we made a feature called Propagate, which finds uh, similar locations in the model that we can apply the same connection to. So when you say Propagate, you can see that the other side is also connected. 
the other purlins. We can do the same for uh, the beams, which were not done here because it's considered different connections in beams and columns. Um, so it's not restricted to uh, these connections propagate. We can also know that these uh, purlins are constrained to these existing beams. We can propagate these purlins and we will find other places we, where we can do, uh, apply the same uh, purlins, uh, also for the columns. And you can see that they are also connected and constrained uh, everywhere, even in the back of the model. Uh, this will uh, update when the model changes. So uh, we'll also do this for base plates, it's the same thing. And after that, we will add some trusses as well, because the span of this building is too wide to support itself. We will add some trusses for strength. This is also uh, constrained in template drawings. So it, if we apply it here, it will adapt to this uh, new uh, size, this new location. Uh, so these have simple connections right now welded connections, which we will remove uh, and replace with something more complex, for which uh, we will also use the library and find something with stiffeners. So you can see that these V-shapes, they're all a little different in angle. The higher it goes, the closer the, uh, the V-shape. Um, so this doesn't matter for propagate. It still recognizes the same situation. So if you propagate it, you see that the rest of the truss still gets these stiffener connections. So this uh, truss is constrained using a dynamic array. In this dynamic array, this will, will keep these connections fixed when you change the number of entries. So if we reduce or, or increase the number of uh, entries, these connections are relinked, uh, some removed, some added maybe, and uh, you can, uh, you can be rest assured that this stays updated. We can now, uh, now that it's finished, also propagate this truss over the rest of the model. And all these connections, again, they follow, so they all get uh, these new stiffeners. All right, so um, let's add a final detail, uh, some more purlins in the bottom. And we do this so that we can add some uh, bracings. So bracings are for rigidity of the structure. And you will get some, yeah, we will also propagate this uh, over the model as well, so that these uh, purlins are everywhere. So we can add a bracing, and you get, again, several connection choices to connect these bracings with their members. Um, so, this is smart copy. Uh, it's basically like uh, propagate, but you do it by yourself. Uh, so I think we're done uh, modeling. Uh, we'll go back to the original LOD 200, so we can change uh, the visibility back to LOD 200. They still exist. Uh, we didn't touch them, uh, and they are linked. So if we now uh, change, for example, the roof, and we move it upwards a little, then... Uh, we can switch back to the, uh, it takes a few seconds, to the uh, LOD 400, and you can see that everything was updated, so all the trusses, purlins, etc., they came along, and the columns were increased in height. 
So let's quickly go to uh, output. So this is the real goal of our application. So we want to generate uh, 2D drawings, CNC files, bills of material. And we'll show uh, these, these have uh, 1,500 plates. Uh, and, but, but many of them are equal, so we have a numbering system. And this numbering system will give all equals the same number. So you don't get too many plates uh, drawings. Here you see what you get. Uh, you get, uh, this is so the shop knows where to drill, how to cut, and how many to produce. So all, this is 1,500 plates, but only a few drawings. Uh, let's show a few uh, assembly drawings as well. This is so the shop knows where to weld and which positions to weld together. Okay, so the assembly drawing is generating. And you can see these all get uh, dimensioning as well. These are automatic dimensions. Um, they are placed using artificial intelligence so to avoid collisions and that it's, it turns out into a readable drawing without too much uh, editing uh, by the user. So let's uh, show a few bill of materials maybe. Uh, the assembly position list uh, just tells you each position what assembly it belongs to. You have a total overview and then uh, maybe show a saw list. And this tells uh, the shop where, which member to saw how long and which angle to saw it. Uh, so let's get back to BIM. So I you see these walls, we didn't touch them. They, uh, they're not steel, so we don't really do anything with it. Um, but but BricsCAD upgraded them to BIM. And usually what happens uh, when we export IFC, BIM export, uh, we only do the steel uh, and we ignore everything else. And when BricsCAD exports, they don't know anything about our BIM data and they ignore that. So BricsCAD made an API uh, to export both, and we can add our BIM data to their, uh, their BIM model, actually. And so if we export this together, uh, we, we will open it in uh, Solibri. It's an independent BIM viewer. And so you can see that our uh, LOD 400 uh, information was all added to the BricsCAD IFC file. And we skipped, for the parts where we have a LOD 400 counterpart, we skip the LOD 200, and the ones that don't have a counterpart are just uh, exported by BricsCAD. All right, so um, 